I worked for many years as a glass designer, and from my perspective, I knew a lot about glass. I came to work for the museum um, and learned that I knew a tiny little slice of what glass could be. The Corning Museum of Glass was founded in 1951, and at the time, the idea of a museum devoted to a single material was relatively unusual. It's been said that you could combine other great glass collections and they would equal ours. The museum is organized as a timeline that spans across 35 centuries. You begin uh, with objects from ancient Egypt, and in fact the oldest object in the collection is also the oldest known portrait in glass. It's a portrait of Amenhotep II. About the time of Christ, glass blowing is discovered, and suddenly glass can become a commodity for every day. Glass is hermetic. It keeps um, air out um, or traps air in. And so it became a, a fantastic, inexpensive container, and glass blowing uh, enabled that to happen. Then we move into the Renaissance and the great explosion of glass blowing techniques in Murano and in Venice. You move into the European galleries, and, uh, which reached kind of a crescendo with uh, large cut glass objects. Uh, I, I think of it as an argument for uh, why modernism then came in the 20th century. Just when you go from more is more at the end of the 19th century to uh, exploring a glass in a more restrained way as you move into the 20th century. The end of the story is really about artists and designers working in glass directly and the, uh, the exploration that they can have with the material. Glass and architecture are an important part of the story that we tell. And in fact, the buildings that the museum is housed in are a collection of buildings from really from the present day going back to the 1950s. And it's, so it's a great arc of time uh, to look at glass and its use in contemporary architecture. So as you visit the museum, you're traveling through a series of contemporary architectural uh, expressions in glass that people find uh, in many ways as fascinating as the rest of the experience. One of the highlights of the museum is our collection of paperweights. Um, and when I, was, when I was new on staff, I was walking through uh, with uh, our curator of American Glass, and I, and I asked her, well, what, what is it about our paperweight collection that really makes it distinctive? And she looked at me, kind of, you know, gave me a double take, and she said, you mean other than the fact that it's the best in the world? <laughs> the glass yields its mysteries, but there's still so many secrets to, to be discovered. And, and that's, that's what keeps it new and exciting. That's why there's a museum dedicated to the subject of glass. And I think that's really the uh, discovery that visitors have when they come here. The thing that's so seductive to me about glass is its breadth of application. The objects are beautiful uh, to admire, to look at, to uh, be inspired by. But they're also beautiful in their utility and what they can do. I've been working every day since 1987 with glass and I've spent virtually every week of all those years in and out of uh, glass making environments and surrounded by objects of incredible beauty. I, I must have watched thousands, thousands and thousands of glass blowing demonstrations and I can't leave before the next one's done. I got to see it all the way through. I still learn every day. I'm still blown away by what the material t can do. I'm still in love with this thing. I'm still in love with glass. And uh, to, 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 to be here, surrounded by it, learning from it, and really that's the key thing. Learning from the material and what it can do is, uh, it's one of the great jobs in the world. <laughs>